consequence of uh, our analysis after seven days that one of the elements needed to expedite this process is the increase in the number of workstations. So it, all in all, it has a debilitating effect on our ability to increase the pace of this process because uh, generally it's a little slow, but with more workstations, we, we, can, uh, we can get moving faster. Is the commission prepared to maybe operationalize this, the one that has already been prepared in, uh, as it waits the, awaits the uh, maybe advice? Of I have my personal views on that. I would say yes, but I prefer, I spoke yesterday of the commission being a, a, a democracy, and I prefer to have that being a collective, de collective decision whether to operationalize one or more of the workstations that we can operationalize immediately. Uh, on that issue of the conduct of our process, remember this was a big issue yesterday, uh, that is the singular ballot box uh, of Region 1 that was not counted because it was waterlogged or water soaked uh, when it, the container was open. Um, uh, we received the instruction uh, information from the CEO earlier on today that, that uh, the contents of that ballot box, at least the ballots in it, have been more or less retrieved and an attempt will be made by the end of today to have the contents thereof checked. That of course will bring uh, to completion or finality the uh, District 1. And District 5, which was moved to yesterday, is moving a pace. So that's a report in relation to that. Uh, you said that yesterday, when there was talk of a by-election for that, you had said that there's no provision in the law for that. Um, don't you think Article 162 might give GCOM the latitude to do a by-election? Yes, but why? Ghana, uh, Ghana runs on a, a... It's a proportional representation issue, and um, that that's a system of election that we run. And I don't believe... Uh, Practically, economically, uh, in terms of time, and even legally, a by-election is the answer to the solution. What we're doing here is a recount. It's not as though on elections day there was some issue relating to the votes or ballots or whatever for a particular um, station and you're unable to get the result of that station. The result of that station is publicly known. And uh, as best as possible, based on the report that they have gotten from the CEO this morning, or, or earlier today, that uh, something can be retrieved from that box and hopefully a result can be gotten from it. Mr. Garnett, how long is an acceptable time to wait on the task force before the commission decides to implement its own measures? Uh, can you say what other measures would have been looked at, such as the removing the items from the checklist that the commission can implement in the meantime? Also, yesterday, uh, the recon process started with Region 5. I understand that there were some issues with almost immediately. Can you say that the was asked to Usually at the bottom. One, the, I think the single bo the box that uh, you're talking about might be box number 5006, where uh, when they opened it, there was only ballots and there was no other uh, supporting documents. Is that what you're talking about? There's no issue there. The commission has made it very clear. What you open the box, what you find inside, you count it, and whatever is there or not there, additionally or whatever, make a make, an, uh, make a, uh, a notation in the observation report. Very simple. There is no need to rehash or to relitigate that issue. You've made a very firm decision on it. It's there. Nothing, nothing fancy to, to deal with there. It's 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 a done deal. Um, remind me of the two questions. What, how long is an acceptable time to wait on the task force? I can only give my opinion here. You, uh, right. Uh, <laughs> I believe that uh, these are very, very, very important uh, processes that we are undertaking. It should not be 24 hours, the, the, the time frame that we actually gave, I think was more than enough. More than enough. I kept saying over and over out here, what we are going through here is, is, is of equal importance as to what is going uh, what the nation is facing which, uh, at the, at the uh, COVID level. And I believe that 24 hours might have been more than adequate. And you see, I don't believe in reinventing the wheel. 
what you have here, I, I actually, I just, uh, I just was walking in the building and my walkthrough of the building coincided with that of Commissioner Alexander. And I was pointing out to him that, look, we are doing fairly well in terms of following internationally accepted guidelines in this building. Most of the stations, we had this whole uh, discussions, we had these whole discussions on High Street a couple short weeks ago about whether 40 people are going to be in a room, 20 people will be in a room, etc. Each one of these rooms, yeah. people, uh, even when this process started, you had concerns about the seating arrangements, etc. It's all settled down very nicely now. Everyone knows where they're going to sit. Everyone knows how far apart from, every, from each other they have to sit. They come outside to eat. They know in the common areas. They know people. everyone is wearing their mask. And it's, it's now a peer-regulated system. So people see there's no need of policing of it anymore. Somebody walks out here, like you do out here. Why are you not wearing your mask? Please put on your mask. You know, stuff like that. Don't sit so close to me. Sit over there. Wash your hands. It's a self-policing operation because everyone is concerned and well aware of the, of the uh, systems. So as a consequence, setting up new stations with the yeah. knowledge that we have already established and taking into consideration the safeguards that we have already put in place, I don't see it as rocket science. I really don't see it as rocket science. We should, we should have set up. We should have set up and had those stations up and running in short order. But we're doing the decent thing and waiting. But I don't know how much longer the patient, the, 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 we're very, I, at least I, am very close to the end of my tether in relation to that. You had a third yeah. question as part of the... I was asking what are some of the other measures that could be put in Right. Um, pace of the proceedings. Every single day we meet, we discuss the pace of the proceedings. And thankfully, those other issues or, or those other mitigating factors that we considered have already been implemented in relation to the sharpening of the checklist already implemented. Um, all the other things, including uh, sp spacing out the, um, making better use of the evening times, all of those, whatever, whatever systems that are within our power to implement, to improve the process, we are trying to do. We are trying to do it. And I'm happy to report that a lot of those have actually been put in place and are actually working. You're seeing the you're seeing the relief on the faces of the participants that they don't have to engage in those uh, some of those superfluous activities. On the matter of the anomalies being raised, uh, throughout the past week we would have been hearing about dead voters and persons who would have migrated and the coalition particularly would have been saying and to some extent producing Certificate, death certificates rather, and make mention of immigration records and what's that more. I'm wondering as a commissioner, as a lawyer, how accessible are these records? Can they be used in this way? Uh, the immigration records too. How accessible are these records to the party and the public generally? Accessibility to records, let me compartmentalize it. As you know, the General Register Office uh, is the custodian of records in relation to Boards and debts and marriages. That is an agency under the control of a government department. Immigration records, similarly, are, are the custodian of those records is the uh, Central Passport and Immigration Office, a branch of the Ghana Police Force, which is also uh, under the aegis of a government agency. Those records like your tax records etc ought not to be released without uh, without proper channels being uh, going through in fact as late as this morning uh, I made an inquiry in my personal capacity as to the availability of um, of services at the GRO and I'm told that it's closed now let me let me fast forward to what's actually happening here there aren't very many instances there aren't very many instances where actual documents are produced there is a, a video there, there. right of a of a birth certificate right that certificate sorry yes i've seen those um 
And of course, as isolated as those incidents may be, I am concerned as to who has access to those documents and whether those documents are being accessed for nefarious reasons. What is more egregious, I believe, is the immigration records, because the police is a part of the uh, the police is a part of the uh, immigration is part of the police. And I have seen I have seen an attempt yesterday in one of these stations where a representative, one of the representatives of the AP and U plus CFC, sought to pro produce a document, sought to produce a document purportedly are emanating from the immigration department. Uh, funny enough, one of, the, um, one of the other representatives in the room criticized the document as saying it's so poorly constructed that a four-year-old could have, could have done the same. What, but, can a party access this document? No, but that's what I'm going to say. Whether it is produced properly or not, it ought not to be in the hands official records of travel of any person ought not to be in their hands. That's why you have, and you've asked me to address this issue as a lawyer as well, that's why you have uh, provisions in the law to make applications to the court perhaps even to have records disclosed, of records of a certain kind disclosed uh, by official sources. That is why you have a whole information act and there's a commission of information, or was, I'm not sure if, it, if the office still exists, to deal, to actually deal with those specific issues. And it is worrisome to see uh, persons purporting to have those documents in their hand, whether they are legitimate or not. The mere fact that they may have access to it is, is of course for concern. But would G be taking those documents into consideration at the end of this entire exercise when the commission is expected to deliberate on the observation report? Not as far as I'm, not as far as I'm aware. The contents of the observation report is one thing. The um, statements of recount refer to the results of elections. And as far as I'm concerned, <coughs> what the statements of recall will be the uh, results of the elections. No, but apart from the results of the elections <coughs> contained in the SORs, the, the instances of the, the observation reports, the commission, I, I remember, said that they would deal with it at some point in time in the future. Would the commission also be looking at these issues as um, access to records and whatnot? Well, access to records, etc. Are you taking the records? I am not aware that the records are being produced to the commission because that was the issue yesterday. Whether that document that the um, the party rep had in her possession was going to be appended to the statement of recount, <coughs> the, the observation report. Well, the statement is a three is a, a three part document which forms the report of every station the SOR, the observation report, and the ballot box checklist, which is now amended. Um, so the question was whether that part, that, that document that the party rep had in our possession would have been accepted by the supervisor of the station and form part of that. By the time clarity was sought on it, the party rep quite quickly retrieved the document and refused to tender it after that. Uh, why is another story? But over the past week, do we yeah. have any records forming part of it? Not as far as I'm aware, no. So is the commission likely to ask for those records? I mean, these are allegations being levied, okay. and I'm assuming that the parties would want to tender that at some point, to have maybe, or the commission would need to scrutinize those documents. In, the in an effort to investigate these allegations, it's not, it's, not the, it's not the commission's place to investigate those allegations. Those, uh, inv the investigation of those allegations, respectfully, is the domain of the courts. And, and all of the case law related to the conduct of elections, etc., speak uh, to those uh, 
to investigations or, or um, interrogations of those kinds of activities to be done by the court, not at the commission level. So then I, I keep bringing up this question as to what is the relevance of having an observation report if the commission is not going to deliberate on it at any point in time. Uh, one of the commissioners, Mr. Alexander, would have said that the, at the end, say for example, Region 1 is at that uh, ending point, they've concluded maybe all of the boxes uh, with the exception of that one. That, that report, along with the observation report, would be sent to the commission for deliberation. So I'm asking, you know, like I said, prior to... Like I said, uh, that perhaps is Commissioner Alexander's view on it, and I don't share that view. I believe that the statements of recall are the conclusive evidence of the result of the election in our contemplation and that is what focus should be on. But the question remains what obtains with these so, reports at the end of the day? As I've said, let me answer you. As I've said, the observation reports contemplated at the inception that you open a ballot box or you, you get a ballot box and there were no party seals. Make a note in the observation. Or the one of the seals was broken. Note on the observation report. You open it and everything was scattered in the box. Nothing was put in a, in, in, a, in, in envelopes. Observation report. To inject and you recall me from the one objecting to the attempt at inclusion of extra of information extraneous to the process into those observation reports. And it is not because they are included there mean that they warrant uh, interrogation. So so not to not to prolong the discussion on this, I hope I've answered it, but like I said, eventually eventually there, there probably is a place for that. When the courts which have jurisdiction to deal with those matters, perhaps they can look at it. But in my humble opinion, I don't believe it's the Commission's place to do that. So you're saying maybe after this recount, maybe somebody should, if they feel it necessary, or see it necessary, to maybe file an election petition to have it properly ventilated? I am not, I am not advocating. I'm to, uh, Mr. Alexander would have said that it depends on the magnitude of the irregularities uh, if it's uh, minute, then I guess pack, uh, the outcome of the recount. Uh, but I'm trying to understand what was the commission's reason behind having all these information or reports or allegations added to the observation report if it's not necessarily going to be used or deliberated upon. As I said, I, I told you what I believe the commission's contemplation was for the observation report. The, in relation to what the Commission's ambit is and what it can examine, I've already said that as well. I am not going to stand here and advocate for or against the filing of an elections petition. There are, I believe, a total of 10 or 12 parties who contested these elections. Each one of them, jointly and or severally, can decide whether they want to file an elections petition or not. It's not my place to advocate or not. All I'm saying is, respectfully, I don't believe that the commission, it is the commission's place to interrogate that. Simple. Interrogate Simple. Sir, could you say if, when, or if the five or six workstations, five or six workstations are to be As many, added, when they are, when they are, how right? many are added? Would the commission continue in accordance with the order which says you deal with the first four regions and then you move on to the next region or are you going to move to include other regions as you count the ballots say for example you go to six seven eight so nine, you asked ten. me you asked me yes i think it was uh gary who was and i still haven't gone and looked at the other uh, since then <laughs> I, like i said i believe you um i haven't gone and looked back at the order um i but i know what you're talking about and obviously if it will require a revisit, we haven't made a decision as to how the new stations will be uh, assigned. But obviously, 
if we are required to revisit uh, the order in relation to the previously uh, agreed upon uh, number of workstations and their assignment, the two went hand in glove. Obviously, when we discovered, uh, discuss this and we come to a decision on it, uh, whichever way, it will be uh, communicated, hopefully in the same manner as an addendum. I thought it was discussed. It was, like I said, um, the problem that we have is the COVID-19 task force hamstring, hamstrung us. It has, has, have, have us hamstrung. It's unfortunate, but here we are. Hopefully, we can get that uh, report very quickly and we can get the show on the road. We're waiting. We're waiting. We don't know. Um, I don't know, given the time of day, whether... Uh, if we receive it even now, if the chairman would be inclined to call a meeting, but we're here, we're here all day, almost like um, like the good com comedy show says, we're here all week. Um, if it, if a meeting is called, we can we can discuss it now and implement the decisions. We're chomping at a bit to get it done. I think yesterday, Kimal had asked a question about the SOPs in your position, and if you had, he had cited a few numbers, right. you committed to check for those four. Were you able to do I, I haven't. Um, the I haven't, but um, only this morning I have retrieved the entirety of the statements of war that I have in my possession and uh, that I have in my custody, and I have them sitting next to the SORs now. I probably will sift through them uh, if time permits overnight and do that because I'm anxious to uh, provide that for you as well. Assuming that you do get permission to set up the additional workstations, can you say what impact specifically it would have on the timeline? Would you be completely within the timeline or would you still require a few days more, only 25 days? The longer we take to implement or, or uh, to install new workstations, the longer it will take to have a take effect. Um, tomorrow, let's assume from tomorrow. Would you be able to complete the within the Practically, I don't think so. But probably, you're probably looking pl uh, at least a few days, but I'm trying, with, like I said before, um, I am hoping, I'm very hopeful, I'm not getting younger every day, I'm hoping that we can have this wrapped up in as close as possible to the previously in my timeline. But even with the new stations, you may need a few more days. That's what I'm trying to clarify. Perhaps, I mean, the maths is there. Like I said, the three factors, Number of hours per day, time it takes for a box, number of workstations. You don't, don't go outside of that. And if those are the three variables and one shifts or two shifts and or three shifts, then you can do the you can do the math. You can do the math. Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you're saying that it's the courts that mean to handle these observations. I think what I'm indirectly getting is that you as a commissioner would advocate for this recount process to effectively ignore the observations. And not, not investigate them for the purpose of this return. I wouldn't want to use the word ignore, mm -hmm. but I will. Uh, I will not use the word ignore, but I'll rely on what I've said earlier on in relation to to Miss um, Marshall's question as to what I believe is our ambit and what what part or what role those uh, those observation reports play in the process. So what should be done with the report? Just a clarity, like During the recon. and after the recon, mm -hmm. like what should be done with them? But Not for, me, them for me, for me, for me, they are not as meaningful. Perhaps after every election, after every election, um, there's usually a retreat to discuss all that happened in the election, etc. Maybe they can play a, a, a pivotal part there. I've also suggested another role that they may play. Uh, yesterday you asked about, um, yesterday you asked, uh, I'm not sure which one of you asked about um, blacklisting. That, that was a particular term yeah. that was used. Was it you? Mm -hmm. About blacklisting of staff. Perhaps they can be used for that and, and, and quality control measures in relation to our staffing complement and all that. There, there are many uses. All I'm saying is that uh, they have really have no central place in the determination of the election results. But Mr. Ganraj, you are one of the commissioners who have advocated following the Mingo declarations that our government should not be sworn in on any fraudulent result. Right. Now we have allegations which say that maybe the elections 
were not credible and you're saying let's have the recount let's use the results and then later we look at the observations which could determine that this election was they not are, credible they are, just, they are just what you said uh, they are just what you said Mr. King they are allegations and as we stand here we stand here there has been no provision of proof there has been no provision of proof this morning as late as this morning i don't want to get into the anecdotal of uh, because i can stand here and give you uh examples all day you've had objections to persons uh persons voting because they were of a particular religious persuasion that happened yesterday so that's true, the Jehovah yes it, it was true it, it, you know if it wasn't as serious as it is, it would have been considered as humorous. That actually happened in a station. This morning, questions were being raised uh, or allegations were being made that, look, I know those persons weren't in the area on that day. Those are allegations. Th that, that's all they are, are without proof. You've also seen on the other side, there are a plethora of videos persons posting on social media to say look i am i they said i am dead i'm here and i'm alive and i'm voting what do you do with that what does gcom do with that do we put it all in a room and, and hold and, and 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 have some sort of inquisition and and when we're done next five years uh declare a result we can't do that we putting can't do aside that. the dead and putting aside the uh, the migrants one commissioner pointed to a situation where they had more um, ballots than marked people markers voted. Now, say for example, they amounted to the to, like to thousands at the end of this process. Do you think that the report should still be ignored? First of all, of first of all, uh, I yes. wouldn't hypothesize on the numbers that they could amount to. But like that example you just said. Yesterday I was in the tabulation center when one of those issues was, was raised. It's clear there are a multitude of reasons why there will be... There was one, one statement of recon that was tabulated yesterday that had two persons on the list of electors and four persons voted. Why? Persons don't want to vote in an empty place. You have, uh, you have certificates of employment. You have GCOM staff who are entitled by law to vote at a polling place or polling station where they are not registered to vote. So, for example, but records uh, would be records would be there exactly. Support search. I think that was considered as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's it. All right. In okay. the sense that they were considered that the documents were absent, not that they were present, that there was no account for whoever voted. What I that's believe. The impression I got. What What I believe occurred is that it was not recorded on the uh, on the observation report and i believe that there has been some query to that but these are like i said i could stand here and deal with anecdotal uh instances but that doesn't that doesn't i'm concerned with having this process concluded um in a timely and efficient manner we can look at all of those things at the appropriate time but i'm i'm sure of what I said earlier. Is there an option for this web ballot box to decide reversion to SOP or by election? Is there another option? Yeah, come on. I, I'm not sure if you missed that one. I said that as far as I'm presently advised, an attempt will be made this afternoon before to count it. Oh, I must have missed that. I know, it's too close to lunch, eh? <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.